cover of words, the Lord is your song, sing. Feel with your heart and touch with your life, dance. All that is rising so clear in the morning of Easter is born, Alleluia. God is a life where earth people live in pain. And in the music of spirited joyful refrains, all it is rising so clear in the morning of Easter is born. Alleluia. A hearty welcome to everyone on this special day. It is Easter, when we celebrate Jesus rising from the dead and all the hope, love, and joy that it brings. We have lived through difficult times this past year. Coping with the COVID-19 pandemic has meant keeping our distance from one another and mourning the loss of too many of our friends and family. But after our Lenten season filled with sacrifice, prayer, and hope in the renewal of Easter. Jesus' resurrection brings with it the promise of a new day, one full of everlasting life and love with the Lord. Let's begin our time together this Easter with a prayer. Let us pray. Your mercy and love, O God, exceed all we can ever imagine or hope for. When you raised your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit, you brought us, your beloved daughters and sons, with him beyond the shadows of death into the light of new and enduring life. Stay close to us now as we journey on earth and walk to our full share in Christ's resurrection. When we stumble, lift us up. When we hesitate before life's challenges, Renew our confidence. When we find ourselves weighed down by loss, infuse us with renewed hope. Keep us always steadfast and attached to Jesus, your Son and our risen Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We join you today from the glorious St. James Chapel at the Archbishop Quigley Pastoral Center. Though currently the headquarters of our Archdiocese, the Quigley Center in Streeterville has served many purposes, including seminary and private secondary schools for boys. But through it all, the St. James Chapel, dating back to 1919, towered above. It's often called the crown jewel of Chicago architecture. The chapel is a replica inspired by Saint-Chapelle in Paris. Its windows are composed of 700,000 pieces of tinted English glass. They come together, forming 245 brilliant panels that bring to life the stories of the Old and New Testaments and the lives of Jesus and the Virgin Mary. As you look at them, keep in mind that by the 1990s, the windows were in danger of crumbling, but people of faith came together as the friends of the windows, raising the money to have them painstakingly restored. The friends of the windows present monthly concerts here in the chapel. Though the pandemic has put them on hold, we can treat you to an Easter performance today. Here now is a musician and vocalist, Eddie O'Connor. heard there was a secret prayer that Peter played before the Lord. And Peter knew that he had surely pleased him. Please, Peter, to give him praise. He watches over all our days. He died for us and we say hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
Alleluia, Alleluia. We sing these songs, we don't know why. We do our best, we surely try. And we don't know what will happen later. Hope we did the correct side. We do not know what is surely right. So all we really say is hallelujah. 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 Now we too are standing here and we both have our fears of what life will give us in the future. We have our fears but we are here. We give our hopes to you in years and all for this we say is hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In the darkness of the pandemic, there have been angels among us, our frontline healthcare workers have risked their own lives to confront a deadly virus, a virus that isolated its victims from their families at a very vulnerable time. Here now are the stories of two nurses from the COVID-19 ward who say their Catholic faith gave them the strength to be there for others. Uh, it's been very difficult. It's like a tsunami of very critically ill patients. It's especially hard when their family members cannot visit them. Critical patients coming in and just pounding the staff left and right. The, the patients themselves are so scared. The family members are so scared. It, it's been something I've never seen in my 40 something years of nursing. And I still stay because I wanna help people. There was a lot of times where I thought, why is this happening? <sighs> there were times when we saw very young people that have been living completely normal lives and we're not sick people and we're not ill in any way, get taken down by this virus rapidly and you just can't even believe it. You can't even believe it. When I have very sick people, I often pray with them, but more importantly, I pray to God to give me the strength to help these people. I don't think I could have gotten through this if I didn't have faith, if I didn't have spirituality, spirituality if I didn't have a strong, strong uh, belief in God. I pray for the families because they can't see their loved ones. They're not there to hold their hand, to give them the comfort they need. Prayer is my strength. And not only would I pray for recovery and healing for anybody, but also to pray for myself to have the courage to accept whatever the outcome is. The best day I had, and funny you should ask, 47 year old who did, who had COVID, bad case of COVID, who had a respiratory arrest. We got him back, we stabilized him, he had a cardiac arrest. We stabilized him, he had another cardiac arrest. Last Wednesday, I got a call from the anesthesiologist intensivist telling me that he had been extubated, he's sitting in the chair and he'll be fine. That was my miracle. My hope is that people continue to have faith that we're gonna get through this. Once the vaccine came on board, I really could feel I could exhale and say, okay, we got this. We can't make predictions right now because it's so unprecedented, but if we don't have hope, we, we don't really have anything.
At Easter, the strength of God's blessings is undeniable. The power of Jesus' resurrection and the promise of new life surrounds us. Father John Carchi, president and rector of the University of St. Mary of the Lake and Mundelein Seminary, reminds us of that in an Easter reflection. I'm Father John Carchi, the rector at Mundelein Seminary. It's important to remember that on Easter morning, when Mary Magdalene and the other women disciples of Jesus were going to the tomb, they didn't think they were heading for Easter joy. They were going to what was probably for them one of the saddest days of their lives. They were going to the very heart of what had been a disappointment and certainly a lot of uncertainty. But they were going as an act of love. They were going to dress the body for final burial. They were going right into the heart of a wonderful relationship and a deep friendship that had meant so much to them. And so if we want to make Easter a time of renewal and rejuvenation for us today, and not just have it be a memory of something that happened 2,000 years ago, I would invite us to think about what is for us maybe a challenging time? What is for us maybe a moment of disappointment or struggle. Maybe there's been some loss over this past year. We've all had things we've had to deal with heavy on our shoulders. But what Easter joy is about is not avoiding those times, but going right to the heart of them, but going as an act of love and going there with the heart of Christ in our minds. So maybe that means a relationship that's become a little bit strained. Use Easter joy in such a way that you go back to that person. Maybe it's extending forgiveness or asking for forgiveness. Maybe it's just texting someone that you've kind of lost touch with throughout the pandemic. Maybe there's a memory that's been weighing kind of heavily on your shoulders. What a beautiful time to bring that out in conversation with a friend or to bring it into Easter Mass on Sunday morning. And maybe you know someone for whom it's been a while since they've gotten back in touch with their faith. I know it's hard with COVID restrictions in the churches and so forth, but those opportunities are really there. If we want to honor what they experienced on that first Sunday morning, it means asking the Lord to love us, not in spite of the things that we struggle with, but right in the heart of them. Be like Mary Magdalene on Easter morning. Don't shy away from those moments that have been tough. Go right there into the heart of them. And I promise you, I promise you, the reason we're still doing this 2,000 years after that first Easter Sunday is because when we invite the Lord into those difficult moments, he always shows up. And then Easter joy isn't just something we're reading about in the Gospels. It really is something we embrace today. And for all of us here at Mundelein Seminary, I promise you, that's our prayer for you. Through the sacrament of the anointing of the sick, 
Jesus reaches out with his love to those who are very ill and frail. For a priest, the rite involves a prayer of faith, but also the laying on of hands and an anointing with oil. In the socially distanced world created by the coronavirus that presents enormous challenges to body and spirit, Father Michael Trail is among the priests suiting up in protective garments to help the Holy Spirit provide comfort to those struggling with COVID-19. So what the anointing of the sick is, it's, a, it's a one of the seven sacraments and it's, uh, it's an encounter of grace asking God to strengthen uh, a person who is suffering either mentally, physically, or psychologically. The sacrament of the anointing of the sick really comes at a, a pivotal time in their life and um, it, it gives them, I, I, I pray and I hope um, and I believe that the sacrament gives them comfort uh, in the face of death. It, it, I hope it gives them peace. It's very natural for our, us as priests to go into people's homes and to go into hospitals and you know other kind of situations to do with the anointing of the sick. But when COVID hit on March 13th, uh, when, when it seemed like the world seemed to shut down that day, um, hospitals were very, very restricted about who they allowed in. Uh, if you know, normally a hospital is a bustling place full of doctors, nurses, everybody else. And when the, when the world seemed to shut down, they were restricting who was allowed in. And so we needed, we needed to get special permission and training to be able to be able to go into the hospital to be able to do anoint people. One of the, the initial trainings that we got were how to do, how to don proper PPE, how to um, properly sanitize our equipment. You know, we, when we walk into the hospital, we bring uh, holy oil in a stock. And so learning how to handle that safely in, in, a, in a way that doesn't create cross contamination, but we can walk in, you know, sterile, then we can learn how to walk out of the hospital room sterile as well, so we don't bring anything back to the people that we love as well. Most of the patients I see, especially in the early days of COVID uh, and during the pandemic, most of them were um, under the ventilation. But now uh, some are not ventilated and I'm able to talk with them. Some are lucid, some are not, some are in a coma. Um, but science tells us that one of the last things to go is your hearing. And so uh, I always try to talk to them, tell them my name, tell them where I'm from, do it in a calming voice where um, they can hear me. You know, I think when someone's ill, it's a, it's very, it's a very vulnerable moment. And, uh, and, and I think in that vulnerability, I think there's just an openness. And it's in that openness where, where, the, where the spirit can work. Was it a morning like this? When the sun still hid from Jerusalem And Mary rose from her bed To tend the Lord she thought was dead Was it a morning like this When Mary walked down from Jerusalem And two angels stood at the tomb Bearers of news she would have soon. Did the grass sing? Did the earth rejoice to feel you again? Over and over, like a trumpet underground, did the earth seem to bound? He is risen. Over and over, like a never ending round, he is risen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Was it a morning like this when Peter and John ran from Jerusalem? And as they raced for the tomb, beneath their feet was there a tomb. Did the grass sing? Did the earth rejoice to fill you again? Over and over like a trumpet underground Did the earth seem to bound? He is risen Over and over like a never-ending round He is risen Alleluia, alleluia Over and over like a trumpet underground 
the earth seemed to bound He is risen over and over Like a never-ending round He is risen Alleluia, Alleluia Was it a morning like this When my Lord looked down from Jerusalem So many of our families have Easter traditions, from meals we share to the crafts we make. It's not uncommon for Americans to decorate Easter eggs, but some families take that tradition to artistic heights. Here's a look at the Polish egg art called pisanki. Pisanki, it means that we put a design on the, on the egg. So you write letters and you write design. We put also color on it, all beautiful colors. You can use different colors. You can use all the colors you want to, made out of natural things like vegetables, red beets or uh, uh, onion skin. You have to prepare or even parsley. It's not easy. I use regular piece of, of wood and needles and you put, drop it in the, in the hot wax and you have to bring very fast the small you know, drop of wax to the, to the egg to make a part of the design you have in your, in your head. The wax has to be hot, not warm, it has to be hot. Eggs have to be wa warm because if the, egg, if the egg is cold, the wax doesn't catch the shell. It's a lot of work. Slowly you have to mix it because you cannot leave the egg in one place because you will destroy the design. When it catches the certain temperature the wax comes off and it leaves the spot white. In my small town I grew up it was our tradition we didn't have TV. It was what all family did. Right now, mostly we are doing this for Easter basket to decorate Easter basket, which which is blessed on Holy Saturday. Wesołych świąt wielkanocnych. Happy Easter. Our thanks to Johanna Takac from St. James at Sag Bridge Mission for sharing her Easter art. Another tradition is the blessing of the Easter baskets. At many of our churches, parishioners will turn out with baskets to be blessed at the altar. Each basket is filled with meats, eggs, butter, and sweetened breads. It helps mark the end of fasting in the Lenten season and is rooted in Eastern European traditions. I grew up in a Croatian home, and here's a basket reflecting our traditions. Inside, you'll find ham, freshly grated horseradish, green onions, dolls made with bread, and decorated Easter eggs. It smells so good. Some of you may have baskets at home now, and we'll take a moment to bless them all. Christ, the living bread, who came down from heaven and gave the gift of the Eucharist to the world, bless our bread that recalls both the manna with which the Father fed the Israelites as they wandered in the desert and the bread with which you miraculously fed those who followed you in the wilderness. Lamb of God, you have conquered death and redeemed us from our sins. Bless the meats, the sausages, the hams, and all the foods that we eat in memory of the Paschal Lamb, who shared the Passover meal with his apostles at the Last Supper. Bless the salt, and as salt keeps food from spoiling, protect us from the corruption of sin. Christ, our life and our hope, bless the eggs, a symbol of new life that we will share with family and friends and guests and thus share with them the joy of your presence among us. Invite us to your eternal feast, the heavenly banquet, where you live and reign forever and ever. No more weeping, joy has come into the world. He is risen.
listen, no more weeping. Joy has come into the world. He is risen, do not fear. Jesus has conquered, he has risen from the dead. Do not fear, Jesus has conquered, he is risen from the dead. Jesus lives, the Lord of lords, fills the world with his glory. He is risen from the dead, in joyfulness we breathe. A blessed Easter to you and all your loved ones. When we began Lent, I said that the 40 days leading to Easter are about renewing our covenant with God, a covenant that promises not only that God will walk with us in this life, but invites us to share the life of the Trinity for all eternity. That is why we boldly proclaim at Mass, dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, he restored our life. Just as Noah was given the symbol of the rainbow for the new covenant after the great flood, the symbol of the new life covenant is the empty tomb. Death cannot hold us in. Jesus broke the barriers of death, opening the way for us to fully share in his new and transformed life with the Father in the Spirit. That new covenant changes everything about our past, our present and our future. The power of Jesus' resurrection touches us right now. So much is weighing on us in this present moment. The pandemic, social unrest triggered by injustice, financial insecurity, and a foreboding climate crisis. And yet, for us, a people who cling to faith in Jesus' resurrection, and who cling to his promise of our future rising from the dead. The power of new life takes hold now, especially in our struggles. As the ancient fathers of the church reminded our ancestors, we are an Easter people. To know God's assurance that Jesus has risen from the dead and to trust in God's promise to raise us up this gives us firm footing to keep us walking in our daily journey. This gives us confident hope. And it is a hope, as St. Paul tells us, which will not disappoint. And so again, I wish you and your families a blessed Easter. Let the new covenant of the empty tomb embolden you and give you strength Count on my prayers for you and your family. And don't forget to pray for me. God bless you all. When 